About 10 years ago, the web became a place where people who were cyber savvy began to put their lives online. Diaries and journals were replaced with weblogs or blogs. Now blogs continue to grow at a dramatic rate, and millions of readers are turning to news blogs to keep up with what's happening in the world. All this is putting some competitive pressure on traditional news media who see these internet upstarts as a potential threat. And back with us again on Chicago Tonight are three Chicago bloggers. Andrew Huff, he's editor and publisher of GapersBlock.com. GapersBlock is a Chicago-centric web publication which provides information on news and events around town. Margaret Lyons is editor-in-chief at Chicagoist.com. Chicagoist also focuses on news and events in the area, including information on restaurants, nightlife, and the occasional commentary. And Kevin O'Neill with CTATattler.com. Kevin uses his blog to document the things he sees and hears while riding the red line every day to work. It also includes the latest CTA news. And welcome all of you to Chicago Tonight. Welcome back. Uh, Kevin, let me get, begin with you. The CTA is making uh, a lot of headlines, obviously. What are you hearing from, uh, from your readers? Yeah, one word, doomsday, doomsday, doomsday. I said it three times, though. But <laughs> <laughs> that's because, well, there's doomsday one, of course, which is November 4th, and then doomsday two, which is January 6th, if the legislature doesn't come up with a, an answer to the funding crisis. So a lot of fear and loathing from your readers? Well, uh, a lot of mad readers. Uh, they're fearful of the cuts and the, the proposed uh, increases to the fares, but also really mad at the uh, legislature and the governor, no question. Uh, Margaret, what are you, what are you uh, hearing from uh, That's what's hot definitely on, what's hot on, on everyone's radar. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it'd be crazy to live in Chicago and have that not be on your radar. That's, def that's way up there for us. Um, you, I think... We get a lot of uh, reader comments sort of placing the blame on different politicians and plenty of people eager to blame Mayor Daley. That sort of never goes away. Um, that's mm. a major, major story for us. I think also on our radar right now is uh, police brutality cases mm, and right. the way that's shaking out, the aldermen and the 28 aldermen and their petition and sort of that, the way that story is developing. Their petition to have the names released right. to them of the police officers accused of the most... Uh, um, Most often accused mm -hmm. of brutality, to right. have those names mm -hmm. available to aldermen. Um, that's been something that, we, that I've been covering, that we've been covering on the site, and it's something I think our readers are pretty interested in, especially tied to, in, within the context of the broader issues of police brutality that Chicago's kind of grappling with right now. Mm -hmm. And Andrew, what's, uh, what's hot on your site? Well, both of those issues have uh, come up on our site as well. Um, we, we've also noticed some uh, more, more of the positive side of uh, the police situation in, uh, in Chicago right now. Like uh, what? There was a, a blog run by uh, Chicago cops called Second City Cop, and uh, they recently helped uh, uh, generate new leads on a uh, cold case, a cold murder case, and uh, that, that got some coverage in our, our blog recently. Do you think the three of you tap into um, like an intensity of feeling among your readers that maybe doesn't come through the mainstream media? I think there's no question that, uh, you know, particularly on my blog, the, the writer is looking for a real way to let it out. And like Margaret mentioned, that blame, pass the blame around. So there's no question that it gives them an opportunity to, to vent. Mm -hmm. Can you think of any specific example that, uh, that you thought that sticks with you? Oh, you mean the ones that I had to delete because they got <laughs> to be just a little bit too out there? Yeah, those, those stick with me. But, uh, I, you know, I think that uh, they, just, they just really look for, uh, they, they don't see that in a traditional media, don't see that opportunity. Oh, there's letters to the editor. And, and now we do see that the Tribune and the Red Eye has their CTA blog. And, right. But they don't seem to get as many comments and yeah. feedback as the rest of us do. I, Kevin, think, no, oh, sorry. Sorry. I think it's not just tapping in for the readers. I think that it's the writers are that we're tapping into something right. that mm -hmm. we're passionate about and have no problem saying, like, this is great or this was, can you believe this, right, with the sort of incredulity that we all feel that maybe a traditional reporter wouldn't be able to say. Mm -hmm. Andrew, uh, is that right? Do you, do you feel more at liberty to sort of express your opinion as opposed oh, to the transportation writer for the Sun-Times or the Tribune? Absolutely. Might not? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're not, um, you know, blogs aren't expected to be objective at all times. And, and so we're a little bit more free to, to say what we think as we're reporting the story at hand. So, yeah, we do see a lot of that. We actually, uh, you know, an, another way that uh, blogs help um, further the discussion is it gives the people who otherwise wouldn't be getting talked to by the media an, a venue to talk about their thoughts and, and share what their perspectives are. 
Um, to your, your, your mention of uh, you know, deleting some posts, we, uh, I just came across a site today called ctasucks.com. <laughs> Is that, that a, is that a new site? That is a new site, <laughs> and that uh, it's a place for people to vent even further than they already do on CTA Tattler or Chicago, I imagine that it might also be a forum whereby people whom you cover might be able to tap into what people are saying. For example, Kevin, right. my understanding is that Ron Huberman is known to come onto your site? He, he mm -hmm. has. He's, he, I interviewed him a couple of times. He mentioned that he, he reads my blog. Uh, he's probably not a daily reader, and that's okay, Ron. We understand you're busy. <laughs> but... Uh, he, I actually had written something, and I got an email from his, uh, one of his top spokespersons saying, oh, Ron wants you to know this, and that's his way of saying, you know, you should post something about it. That was actually the, uh, what the post I made where the CTA had a new cleaning method for cleaning the seats and the, the floors, and I, I broke that story, and other, the Tribune followed up on it, and so I thought that was interesting. He, Basically, yeah. feeding us like uh, you know any normal media is going to be fed by mm -hmm. you know your source. That was an interesting sure. story because people who use public transportation are interested in the condition yeah. of the cars, and you were the first people to pick up the fact right. that uh, there was an increased emphasis on uh, right. maintenance. Uh, other examples of stories that you broke that uh, came out first on your sites before it made it into the mainstream media? Sure. Uh, there was a, a restaurant in uh, Greek town called Butter. Uh, it was at one time one of the, the top restaurants in town, and it uh, closed abruptly after Saturday night service. And uh, we were tipped off by uh, somebody who was familiar with the, uh, the uh, management. And uh, we had it up um, in about an hour later. Time Out had it on their blog. Mm. And uh, it took at least a day or two before it got into the, the Tribune or sometimes. I think with Cheetah Gym closing, that's sort of our right. primo example. That's something that I still haven't seen an enormous amount of coverage. Cheetah Gym, right. it's a chain of uh, gyms, including one in Andersonville. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so one of our writers, I guess, went to the gym in the morning. It was closed. He posted on the blog, like, right. I guess Cheetah Gym's closing. And sort of from there, it just really blew up. And we got really crazy information from our readers and from management and from the staff and it, we sort of became the go-to place for mm -hmm. all things Gina yeah. Gym related. We were really pointing too. people to that. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. great. Uh, to what extent do you think, I mean, you, you each gave an example of a story that percolated with you before it made it out to the mainstream. To what extent do you think mainstream media is feeling the heat from news bloggers? You tell me. <laughs> How much are you feeling the heat? I think it's a good I question. I mean, you know, there's we, a we do see that you have, mm -hmm. right, but I think there's a lot of outlets right. do not have. And we, and we see the Tribune with mm -hmm. a bunch of new blogs and 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 responding to that. And I think the uh, I think they still lack the nimbleness because mm -hmm. they need they do need to be a little more careful. That's not to say that we bloggers don't have a responsibility as well. Mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, we're reporting the facts, reporting it straight. And, you know, so with the privilege of having, getting the information, we, we have that responsibility as well. So well how do you react when you hear uh, news blogs described as, you know, akin to the digital Wild West where, you know, there's bias, there's conflict of interest, there's, uh, you know, there's personal prejudice and so forth that you still lack the credibility? I think bias, personal interest are also things that I could lobby, those are accusations I could make of any mainstream media outlet. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that we're transparent about our bias is an asset. I think that's one of the mm. things I know my readers look for because when it's absent from a post, I get emails. Right. I think, you know, I think any, with media conglomeration and there always being a corporate parentage interest and stuff, I think it's crazy to think that, oh, when I read a blog, I'm getting something biased, but when I read it in the Tribune, it's from you know, God's lips. Like, that's, that's crazy. I don't think anyone actually believes that anymore. I think the fact that we're straightforward about it is one of the things that makes us appealing. All right, and that's where we'll have to leave it. Margaret, Kevin, Andrew, thank you for coming back. Good to see you all. Good to see you, too. Thanks. Thanks. And if you'd like to take a look at their blogs, you can find links to them on our website. Just go to WTTW.com and click on Chicago Tonight.